Hello, this is a specimen of the heart and the left ventricle has been cut open. So we are looking at the aorta, the aortic valve. This is part of the mitral valve. And over here, if we rotate this, this is the right ventricle and this is the pulmonary trunk with the pulmonary valve. Rotating it the other way, here is the left atrium and here is the right atrium. The main pathology is located in the left-sided valves of the heart. So let's take it one by one and first focus on the aortic valve. We have for comparison here the pulmonary valve and if we focus on this particular cusp, we can see what we expect of a normal appearance of the valve cusp very translucent and smooth appearing. When we come over to look at the aortic valve cusps, we can see that they are abnormal because they are thickened. In fact, they are actually fused to each other here. They are whiter and this is due to fibrosis. And you can see that all the cusps are damaged. So this is actually secondary to rheumatic heart disease. What happened was that there was initially inflammation and damage to the endocardium of the valves, and then subsequently there was fibrosis. And with this appearance of fusion and thickening of the cusps, there is likely to be both aortic stenosis as well as some degree of aortic regurgitation because the valve is probably not able to close fully as well. For the mitral valve, we can see from this angle that actually the chordae tendinae are quite thickened and fused. But let's look at a different angle. Here is actually the left lateral surface of the heart. This is the apex um, and this is inferior and this is superior. And here is the left atrium. I'm just going to rotate it and looking into this, here is the orifice or the opening of the mitral valve. We can see that it is quite deformed and it's quite slit-like in some areas. And perhaps we can have a closer view here. Again, this is the left atrium and this is the opening of the mitral valve into the left ventricle. This is known as a fish mouth appearance because we can see that the mitral valve is actually thickened, it's fused in this position. And if you just look at this, you can imagine that there is a degree of stenosis and also at the same time, because the valve is not able to close fully, likely regurgitation. So we have an abnormal aortic valve with aortic stenosis and also likely some degree of aortic regurgitation and also mitral stenosis and probably accompanying mitral regurgitation. And this is due to rheumatic heart disease where there is initial inflammation and damage and subsequent fibrosis. The mitral valve is most commonly involved followed by the aortic valve. So let's take a quick look at the pathophysiology of rheumatic heart disease. This usually is an immune reaction. It is not a direct infection of the cardiac tissues. And this occurs a few weeks after an episode of group A streptococcal infection, often in the form of pharyngitis. And what happens is that the group A streptococcal antigens will incite an immune response in terms of antibodies and T helper cells from the host. And then this response will cross-react with host proteins that are found in the heart. So cardiac self-antigens are recognized by our own CD4 T helper cells and antibodies. And this results in inflammation and tissue damage. And this can progress to chronic rheumatic heart disease, which often results in fibrosis and thickening of the valvular cusps and also chordae tendinae, as we saw in this particular specimen. Microscopically, we can sometimes see these Ashkov bodies, which are collections of lymphocytes, plasma cells, not surprising because these are the ones that produce antibodies, and Anichgau cells. So what are Anichgau cells? These cells are actually macrophages and they're quite pathognomonic for rheumatic fever. We can see an example here where in the nucleus, which I'm outlining now, the chromatin condenses centrally, almost to a ribbon, and this kind of gives it a caterpillar appearance. So these are also known as caterpillar cells if we see them cut longitudinally. However, if they are sectioned transversely like this, this is what we will see. And this is sometimes described as an owl's eye-like 
nuclear appearance. So in summary, this is an example of a heart showing the effects of chromatic heart disease and we have here abnormalities in the aortic valve leaflets such as thickening, fibrosis, fusion of the cusps leading to aortic stenosis and likely a degree of regurgitation and also involvement of the mitral valve showing this fish mouth mitral stenosis.